Welcome to Fish School episode 2. In this episode, we create our player controller. Sandbox provides you with a default player controller which handles everything for you, from the walking and swimming to the camera and the animations. To access it, all you have to do is create a new game object in hierarchy and select the player controller preset. Let's rename our into just player. Let's place it at the center of the map and click play. Look at that, it can run and jump, but not only that, it can also swim and climb as well. We'll look at that in a few minutes. If we look at the game object itself, you can see that it has a few components that came with the preset, the player controller component and a few move mode components for climbing ladders, swimming and the default one, walking. If you wanted you could make your own move mode, for example a jetpack mode, but we won't be looking into that for this tutorial. An interesting quirk of the player controller component is that it uses what's called features, which are these little tabs on the top. While it can be restricted to use a pre-made controller, you are also able to disable these features and implement them yourself. For example, we have a camera feature, which you can toggle between first and third person. But if you wanted to do, let's say, a top-down camera, you can right-click and remove. You can add it back here, or do Ctrl Z to undo what we just did. Remember to save once in a while. Actually, since we are currently in play mode, it will ask you to save a copy. So make sure not to make changes in the scene while it's playing. Rather, stop and then save. Maybe you didn't notice, but if you look at the components on our player, it's missing the model renderer and the collider, which we explained last episode. There's two reasons for this. The collider and rigid body components do exist. They are created and hidden by the player component itself. And if we click these buttons, you'll see them reappear. This is just to tidy up really, but it's useful with this sort of master components that need other components just to work. As for the model renderer, it's inside of a child game object here, called body. Same with the colliders we just enabled earlier. These child game objects will follow the parents transform every frame. You can drag them out, place them inside of another game object, or bring them back in. Since the model renderer is rendered on top of the game object it's on, we are able to offset the model itself without moving the player. It might sound useless for what we want to do, but if we play the scene, split the game view, and do a crouch jump, you can see that the model's game object is being offset vertically. Let me select the scene itself, which shows up in the hierarchy as the parent of every game object. We can slow down the time scale and take a closer look. If you're a Gmod developer, you'll understand immediately what's going on, because that's exactly how Valve handles jump crouching in all of their games, from Half-Life to Counter-Strike. A clever trick of moving up the player and offsetting the model. That's why jump crouching gets you higher than a normal jump. Let's rehide the components, they are pretty ugly. Now, we won't be using these move mods in our game, but I'm going to show you how to set them up anyways, in case you want to use them in the future. First up, with the lowest priority, is Walk Mode, which is what you've seen me do until now. Ground Angle is how steep you can climb uphill, and the steps here is how tall stairs can be for you to climb them. Next up, with the maximum priority, we have Swim Mode, with Swim Level of 0.7, meaning your player needs to be 70% submerged before it starts swimming. To set up, let's create a new cube, and call it Water. Let's tint it blue, and make it transparent with the alpha slider. Then we add a box collider, 50 units wide, 50 units long, and 50 units tall, just like the purple cubes in the first episode, which fit perfectly around the model. Now for the collider, we want to check the Ease Trigger property, and now our player will be able to walk through the cube, since it's now used to define an ARA which will trigger a special condition or run code when entering. In our case, it will switch to swimming once inside. The only thing missing is adding the water tag to the cube. Up here on the top right and select the default water. This lets our player controller know that the trigger it's inside is water. Let's scale up the cube, place it here and click play. Now we can swim in the cube. It's hard to see on the video, but the water looks grainy. 
That's because the default cube material doesn't support translucency, so it uses a technique to fake it. We can go to the material and override it. Go to the sandbox core assets. If you don't see this, you'll have to show base content over here with right click and look up primary. This will show all of the primary color materials and what we are looking for is this primary white trans material standing for translucency. Let's select it and now our water looks smooth. Preferably you'd use a water material but they are still working on it so try looking for water. Maybe they have implemented it by the time you're watching this tutorial. Anyways, up next we have the ladder move mode which, as you can see, it looks for a ladder tag, similar to how it looks for the water tag in the swim mode. Let's create a new cube, and this time let's call it ladder. Let's actually change the model. I'll switch to the cloud browser and look for ladder. Look at all of the cool options, I'm sure there will be many more in the future as well. I'll pick the most basic one. And this time around, for the collisions, I'll use a model collider. If a model comes with a defined collisions, you can reference them with this component rather than trying to build your own out of box colliders. All you have to do is drag the model inside of the model property. And you can see that the collisions have appeared. Now we still need a trigger for the controller to know it's currently touching a ladder, and for that we'll still rely on a shrimple box collider set to trigger and try to fit it around the ladder using the size and center properties. Alright, that looks good. Try to make it thin but still have it larger than the ladder's collisions. This way the player is able to reach the trigger. I offset it a bit so that the player can climb only this way and not the back of the ladder. Last thing needed is a ladder tag on the game object there's a default one over here. Let's place it down, right in front of the water, play the scene, and there you have it, a pretty good default ladder, as long as you set the trigger correctly. Now the citizen is currently missing the climbing animations, but they will be implemented by face pants once they're done, you won't have to do anything. Just be patient, they only have one animator by the time I'm recording this. The ladder and swimming themselves should behave just like how they do in Gary's mod. They were implemented by Gary himself, creator of mod, so if you have any complaints, make sure to forward them to him. I think this is good enough for today. Next episode, we'll make our snot enemy. Thanks for watching, and check out our Discord server.